Hi, and uh, welcome to what will be the first in a series of um, YouTube videos um, just to try and explain Basecamp basics um, for adventure riders so you can use it to plan your next ride. Um, this is how I use Basecamp, not necessarily the only way, um, but I've found it probably the best way for uh, adventure riding for sure. So the first thing we need to do is to um, install Garmin Basecamp. So it's a free download from Garmin and once you've downloaded and installed Basecamp then I suggest that you go and download and install Shonky Maps which is um, a free topographical mapping. Uh, Basecamp itself comes with a very basic um, um, global map and Shonky Maps will give you um, a better detailed topographical map. There are other methods of uh, m other mapping such as open street mapping and in some cases your device may have already come with mapping installed. If you do have a Garmin compatible device with installed mapping then I suggest that you actually install um, a program called Garmin install first and um, if you look at this uh, Garmin Guru's um, tutorial on his YouTube channel at that address um, it will tell you how best to install Basecamp for you um, and it will make sure the internal mapping is then available in Basecamp. So once it's installed and you launch Basecamp for the first time apart from a few pop-up boxes that you need to get rid of it should look something like this and if you um, see across the top here you've got various drop down menus you've then got various action buttons and you've obviously got the the main window with the map and a couple of side windows here so if we look at the map itself we're set to this um, global map which is not very good detail but first of all let's just go through how we would move the map around and zoom in and zoom out in Basecamp uh, there's generally at least two or three ways of doing everything similar to Windows and so in this case um, for zooming the map in and out we have a zoom tool up on the toolbar on the tools menu we have the zoom selection if we hover over here we have a slider bar and then also we can left click on the map itself and then use uh, the scroll on our mouse to scroll in and scroll out the zoom button itself will allow you to select a particular area and zoom in probably much quicker. You'll see now that um, my mouse pointer is the zoom tool and to go back to the hand which is the pan tool just select and you can do that in the tool manual um, to tool menu as well. Right so with the pan tool, i.e. the hand, you can left click anywhere on the map and you'll see the hand grab the map and you can pretty much move it wherever you want. And then zoom in, zoom out on the scroll without having to um, left click at all. Right, so, so that is um, how to negotiate the map. you will find with some of the tools you use that um, once you've selected a particular tool like track or waypoint it's very difficult then to move the map around without reselecting the pan tool but instead what you can do is hover over this point and use those buttons or you can use the arrow keys on your computer up down left and right Alright, so if I now select the map to the Shonky full topo, you'll see then it gives us a greater level of detail. 
and Chunky Maps is reasonably good for being able to plan tracks and um, s set up trips. Now on the left hand side you'll see here the top window is the library which is uh, a collection of folders and then Garmin Adventures which uh, we can talk about later and then if I get my Garmin compatible device and plug that into the computer it will take a few minutes to um, sort itself out and communicate with the computer but hopefully in a minute you'll see it come up on the left hand side of the page and at the same time there'll be all sorts of um, pop-ups that start um, going off hopefully here it comes so there you go it comes under the title devices you'll see mine's a Montana 650 and this folder is showing it's the internal storage folder and then this is showing the memory card with its own folders and I've just got a few pop-ups to get rid of now on my particular Montana I have the topo mapping installed on the internal memory of the device and I have an additional memory card with um, City Navigator, Shonky Maps and Tracks for Australia on. Now once the device is connected to Basecamp when you use the drop down menu in Maps you'll see that those maps have now become available to you for you to use um, during your trip planning with um, Basecamp. So I can now select Oztopo and you can see it's a greater level of detail again than chunky maps okay so before we really get started let's show you the library structure so the, the library is pretty much like any windows um, you can select my collection and right click and a menu will come up from that menu I'm going to create new list folder and start to build some sort of structure into the folders so that when I start <coughs> creating tracks I can put them in some sort of order sorry that was my fault alright so once we've got a, a folder structure set up within the folders we have the ability to create a subfolder or what Basecamp calls them as lists now a list is a group of tracks waypoints that make up a particular ride or adventure that you wish to group together and it is the list which you're then able to import or export and share with your friends so it can contain one single track but it can contain multiple tracks and it will all transfer as a .gpx file and go across in its entirety and that could be um, the complete tracks for up to a 14 day ride or anything you wish so the folders themselves are literally folders like um, any windows but the lists are actual .gpx files which can contain multiple waypoints and tracks okay so each of these can be labeled as a particular ride or whatever you want to call them so then there are two methods in which now to um, transfer tracks in the internal device of my storage um, on my device you'll see that I've already got several tracks now I can now transfer them to Basecamp literally by highlighting them with a the left click and then just dragging and dropping them up 
to the top part to the top window and now if I click on this new list it will show its contents down in the bottom box there new list and you can see I've transferred that one item to that new list and it still appears in the internal storage of my own device so I've literally shared it across now the other thing is if if somebody were to send you um, let's just get rid of a few of these things if somebody were to send you a track by email then what I would normally do is save it to my desktop so here is one that I saved earlier and now if I select that track it will automatically launch Basecamp and you will suddenly see that it will deposit it up in this area there you go so it has put it on the same line as my collection so it will always do that and you can't pick where you want to put it if you do wish to put it in a particular place then it is easy enough to just drag it from your desktop and then put it exactly where you want so in this case I'm going to pop it in day rides so there you go it's gone into day rides um, I can highlight that one and then uh, remove it and that is probably the cleanest way to put um, tracks into and out of your collection and how to move them between your device and Basecamp Alright, hopefully that's sufficient for a short introduction and um, we can go into greater detail in forthcoming episodes. Thanks for watching, uh, see you later.